those are gaffes that are just beyond gaffe. They're beyond parody, aren't they? Um, let's hear what he had to say during this NATO press conference where he introduced Vladimir Zelensky as President Putin. Russia will not prevail in this war. Ukraine will prevail in this war and will stand with them every single step of the way. That's what the compact says, loudly and clearly. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> president Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway. I mean, I'm sorry. Does he have the name written down? Uh, OK. And uh, it was just, what? <laughs> what? And it didn't stop there because um, he then introduced his vice president and had an interesting name for her as well. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Number one, the fact is that <clears throat> the consideration is that I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once, and I will beat him again. I mean, it was actually during a speech when he was talking about how qualified he was when he called his vice president the name of the rival. And so that, this still got that extra cringe element. I'm starting to think it's actually quite cruel, this, because, you know, I don't know, are we being unfair? I don't know. Well, let's talk to Laurie Laird, who is a US political commentator, joins us live on the line. Are we being unfair? I mean, mistakes Kristen, sort of happen. Yeah, good to see you. Listen, every time I see one of those clips, I feel even worse about it. It does. It feels like sport, doesn't it? It feels like we're actually torturing this man every time we look at these clips. Here's the thing, though, Krista. A lot of politicos think this wasn't a bad press conference and the reason they think that honestly i know i'm looking looking at your face right now the reason they think that is that his command of the policy detail was pretty good his his depth of knowledge the way he explained particularly when it came to the middle east the way he explained his uh, relations with benjamin netanyahu in israel people were impressed with that and despite those two gaffes we've just saw despite those two gaffes that bo made both of us sort of you know sharp intake of breath, the betting markets are actually putting Biden's chance of winning the election a little higher than they were the day before the speech. Uh, so, okay, okay, so, I'm saying, so, so, this isn't all that bad news for the Biden gap. Okay, but... Crazy, I know. But optics are so important in American know. Uh, politics. Know. You know, I mean, when you've got a team of advisors that, that that can spend hours and i know that you know hillary clinton used to go through this you know worrying about what her hair looked like worrying about what you know his hair might look like you know all of these sorts of things because you know all of the tv audiences are are, are so acute and so sensitive to all of these sort of minor little details that you get I just wonder whether those... Well, I mean, this is apparently hey. what, what, what Barack Obama and, and Nancy Pelosi are, are talking about now, that they're worried that every single day his chances of winning are just going to erode that little bit more. Well, and that's it. Every public appearance, we're now scouring for, does he seem sane? Does he not? And you mentioned that Americans are very conscious of how things look. This is a NATO summit. Right? We've got wars going on. This The world is a much scarier place than it was four years ago. And all we're talking about at the NATO summit is whether Joe Biden is capable, whether he is senile, whether he can run the U.S. And by extension, if you're the head of the, of the country with the world's biggest military or one of the world's biggest militaries, you're kind of leading the world as well. The fact that at this point in NATO's history that we're talking about whether Joe Biden knows, you know, is stumbling over words is absolutely appalling, Krista. Whether he's well enough or not, perception matters here. And no one believes that he is up to the job right now. And also, again, I think perception, not just among the public and among voters to get him through the next election, it is perception of other world leaders because America yeah. is... Yeah. is 
they need to be, she needs to be respected on the world stage in order to have the influence that America has. Well, are other world leaders thinking, well, is this the real Joe? Is this is this actually what he means when he's saying this? When he's referring to a particular course of action, is this actually what he means? Or, 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 or sure. should we try and second guess it? So, so no, um, at some point... There's a feeling of... Who's driving the bus here? And poor old Keir Starmer had to, you know, had to say something about his meeting with Biden. He can't say no. The man's, you know, the man's a complete lunatic. He had to say something. Really difficult PR project for him. But you're right. The world needs to think that somebody capable is driving the bus, and that kind of confidence isn't here right now. And again, the world is a very, very scary place. Putin must be loving this. Xi Jinping in China must be loving this because the guy who's running the biggest military doesn't seem to be up to it. Maybe he is, but appearances matter. OK, well, then what about Trump, though? Because although Trump, I think, is is is, is much more cognitively capable, he can, <laughs> go, sure on, about that, well, he can go on a bit of a ramble <laughs> as well sometimes. I mean, sometimes he can he can uh, talk for an hour. I mean, I remember when he had the, the, the press conference after he was convicted, he'll talk and talk and talk. But sometimes yeah. he'll sort of jump from one place to another and, and you'll think... Absolutely. And, so, and look, and he mixes up names all the time. That doesn't matter because that's not where the scrutiny lies right now. And the fact that this we have the President of the United States and every time he makes a public appearance, we're all waiting for it, we're all waiting breathless for it, doesn't look good. The scrutiny that Donald Trump is under is very, very different. But I think one thing that's really interesting is there was, there's was there been a little bit of polling since that, uh, that debate on the 27th, that disastrous debate on the 27th. I'm surprised that Biden hasn't lost more ground. He lost a couple of points in national polling. He lost some big points in some of the swing states. But the dip wasn't quite as dramatic as what I thought, and I, and I, you know, am, I, am I wondering, Americans, do they, have they already made their peace with the fact that Joe Biden is senile, Donald Trump is a crook, we already know this. And so each marginal event doesn't seem to be affecting the dial all that much. I wonder what the turnout will be like. I mean, I wonder if they, they do end up going to the polls. That's a good question. I wonder if people will, will actually say, I, I, I'm not really interested in either. Exactly. I'm completely disengaged. And I think you've raised the really big question. I think let's even narrow that a little bit. Turnout amongst youth. This is really ironic. The oldest president ever had the biggest turnout amongst youth votes in 2020, even higher than Obama, who, right, was meant to be this silver-tongued orator who connected with the kids. Biden's turnout amongst the young was younger. And if that cohort doesn't turn out, he may have some trouble if that cohort says all these people are really old. And it's not just Biden and Trump. Look at Nancy Pelosi, who's jumped in on this Joe Biden thing. She's three years older than Biden, for heaven's sake. Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate, freezes what but he it, speaks. But it's not, it's not about There's age. Not it's, it's, it's about, it's about um, ability. Because I think that, you know, I, I don't care whether... Joe Biden is 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 ninety five. You know, you could be you could be really coherent at that age. It's it's about whether you've got the cognitive ability. Absolutely, and whether you appear to have the cognitive ability. But going back to your very good point on turnout, if this young cohort thinks these people are too old, I'm not part of this process. That could really be important for how this election turns out. No, fair enough. Uh, really good to talk to you, Laurie Laird, U.S. political commentator. 